Okay, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, all glory, and honor to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ. This is Soldier Ariyala. All right, and the topic of this video is going to be addressing these keyboard warriors. All right, these Facebook and these Instagram prophets. All right these house niggas all right now i posted this picture yesterday on my instagram all right uh, of a t-shirt that i was that i bought from the chief priest alazar bun lawyer all right uh, from his clothing line uh, urban gorilla all right and the shirt says feel nigga and then the scripture below is matthew 13 and 44 all right now and i quoted that uh that scripture as well in the caption or whatnot, right? So, of course, there's always got to be a hater, right? And there's always got to be a simple Negro who thinks they know what the hell they're talking about, right? So, this one brother right here who runs this channel called Israelite Polygyny 101, he says, somehow this was a good idea. Being a, being a smart ass, right? And I've been getting at this nigga all damn day. Uh, and I asked him what was his issue. And he says, you're walking around with a shirt that says feel nigga on it. And it's tacky. It's a bad idea. So, first before I, I get into how I cut his ass real quick. All right, let me go to the to the scripture that's quoted on my shirt all right that's referenced on my shirt so it's matthew 13 and 44 now in the entire book uh chapter of matthew yahweh is giving a bunch of parables right this in verses uh i believe verses 8 9 and 10 i believe let me go up to it verses uh 10 uh Verse 9, I'm sorry, verse 9, Matthew 13 and 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. So, he's, he gave a parable, all right? And he said, who have ears to hear, let him hear. Whoever has the ears to hear, let him hear it. Again, not everyone has the ears to hear or has the wherewithal to understand what's being said. Because everyone has two ears, right? But everyone doesn't have, and everyone has a capability of hearing things. But everyone does not have the capability of understanding things. All right. So verse 10. And the disciples uh, came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the, ma the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. See, Yahweh Shai didn't want everyone to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. All right. Yahweh Shai didn't want everyone to understand these parables. That's why he taught. And spoke to the people in parables, right? So let's get down, let's get to one of those parables. The parable that's quoted or referenced on my shirt, all right? It's Matthew 13 and 44. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, all right? So the kingdom is a tr the truth of the kingdom. And what we what we believe in, all right, the, the truth, knowing the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, knowing that we're the true children of Israel, knowing that salvation is only for us, knowing, you know, understanding the, the scriptures, keeping the law, statutes, commandments, all that stuff, the truth, right? The truth of the kingdom, all right, is the treasure in this in this parable, right? So again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, right? The the truth is out in the fields, all right, out in the streets, all right. What is uh I'll get that in a second. In Proverbs, it says that wisdom crieth out in the streets, right? All right. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. All right. So, what the men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord, what we when we when we found out the truth of the kingdom, when we found out the truth that we were the children of Israel from one of the various tribes that we had to keep the law, statutes, and commandments that we had to keep the faith of Yahweh Shai. 
that as men we have to go out onto the highways and hedges and to compel our people to come into the marriage as well when we when we came into that truth when we when we found that treasure all right what did we do all right we decided to go out into the field all right we t- we decided to go out into the field and do the work necessary to receive that treasure all right the treasure is the kingdom ultimately the ultimate treasure is the kingdom however in order to get to the treasure you have to know the truth and you have to live the truth and you have to teach the truth okay that's how you receive that's how you inherit the kingdom all right that's what the elect are going to do okay lord willing all right we the men all right so this is what that shirt was in reference to okay these the field niggas the niggas who are out there on the highways and byways each and every week putting their lives on the line all right trying to wake up the the stiff-necked nation of israel which are you so-called blacks hispanics and native americans those are the field niggas. Those are the those are the men of the Lord who are actually out there doing the work. All right, not you niggas who are, sit in the comfort of your home. All right, typing away on the keyboard. All right, or thumbing away on your cell phone, on social media. Those are not the field niggas. Those are not the true men of the Lord. Those are not the prophets. The all of the prophets went out into the streets, went out into the fields. Okay. And that's something that a lot of men in Israel cannot wrap their heads around. All right. Now, let's uh, let me get that precept I was talking about. Proverbs, the first chapter. All right. This is Proverbs uh, 1 and 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate of knowledge. See, this brother who wants to be a hater, all right, who obviously doesn't go out on the highways and byways, all right, obviously doesn't, just from the discourse that I have with the brother, all right, He's a he he he's a scorner. All right, he loves simplicity. He loves the simplicity of just sitting on his ass, all right, in the comforts of his home, typing away on Instagram and Facebook. All right, it's these niggas that drive me up a wall. Okay, but wisdom is crying out in the streets. What's the wisdom? These law, statutes, commandments. What are the men of the Lord doing? Telling our people to repent, to keep the law, statutes, commandments, and the faith, in order to receive the kingdom. All right, we're out in the chief places of concourse. All right, all right, and we're 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 speaking the words of wisdom. We're speaking the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, this holy Bible. All right, that's what we're doing each and every week when we go out to the highways and hedges. All right, so that's that's that is the that is the the reason why I decided I'm going to buy this particular shirt. All right, Chief has multiple shirts. Multiple designs on his website, but that feel nigga shirt. All right, all right. I said I need that man. I need that shirt. Okay, I need this shirt because this is this this is this is what it's all about. All right, being a feel nigga. All right, the feel niggas are, are the ones who are going to inherit the kingdom. And I'm not saying that everyone that's out on the highways and byways is going to inherit the kingdom or is a part of the elect. I'm not saying that, but God damn it. A lot of them are, all right? All right, we're the ones who's actually keeping the commandment of Yahweh Shai. And pursuant to Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, verses eight, uh, verses 18 through 19, all right? Whatever Yahweh Shai spoke was the direct commandment of the Most High God. And if you don't do what the Most High God told you to do, what is that? That's iniquity. That's sin, okay? All right? Just like Jonah. Jonah, Jonah the Most High told Jonah to go prophesy in the Nineveh. Jonah wanted to do what he wanted to do. And was like, nah, I'm not going to Nineveh. What did the Most High God do? He had a big fish swallow his ass up. All right. So we see that, that again, we know the, the, the precept, 1 John 3 and 4, that sin is the transgression of the law. But however, according to the law, whatever Yahweh Shai, that prophet that the Most High was going to raise from amongst the, our brethren, the children of Israel, whatever he says, the Most High God is going to require 
All right, he's going to let me get that man. Let me, he's gonna let me get that. It's Deuteronomy 18 chapter. Cause you keyboard niggas, man, y'all drive me up a wall. This is Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. See, the Most High God uh, is going to require it of you niggas who don't want to get up off your lazy ass and go out into the highways and byways, all right? He's going to require it of you, okay? Yahweh Shai said, all right, in a parable, to go out into the highways and hedges. Okay, let's get that. Let me start. I'm going to start from the top. This is Matthew 22 and 1. And Yahweh Shai answered and spake unto them again by parables. And said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, all right, which made a marriage for his son, okay, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they could not come. And again, he sent forth other servants, saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things already come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his, his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up the, their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. See, that's what we have to do, okay? We have to go out to the highways and byways and bid the, our fellow Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, into the marriage, to be married back to the Most High God through Yahweh Shai. That's what we're supposed to do. We're, the servants of the Lord, Salah, the servants of the Lord are going to go out to the highways and hedges and compel the people to come into the marriage. That's what we're supposed to do. All right. Not on the Internet highways. OK, but the, on the physical, actual highways. All right. In the streets, the chief places of concourse. That's what the men of the Lord are tasked to do. All right. That's what they're tasked to do. So. The men of the Lord are field niggas. Okay? Now, let's get back. To, let me go back into uh, to the comments that this simpleton made. All right. So, so I asked him, what's his issue? He said that you're walking around with a shirt that says field nigga on it, and it's tacky, and it's a bad idea. So I responded with, only a house nigga would have a problem with it. The true prophets who hit the highways and byways, i.e. the field, were called nigger, or nigger, however you want to pronounce it, in Acts 13 chapter. And you don't... I said, and I, sorry, it's a typo. I said, and you don't know the backstory behind this shirt. All right, then I quoted Ecclesiasticus, or Syrac 11, 7, through eight, blame not before thou hast examined the truth, understand first, and then rebuke. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause, neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. All right. So, again, all right, Acts 13 alone is just a, is a, is a dagger. All right. So, let's get that. Actually, let me let me read the, the, the uh, comment. All right. So, he says, nigger and, and, and niger or nigger are two different words, correct? And I want to bust his ass up on that in a second. So let's go to Acts, the 13th chapter. OK, it says now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. That was called nigger or niger and Lucius of Cyrene and uh, Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch and Saul. All right. So let's go into the Greek. 
Okay, let's go into the Greek. Let's look at that word, neger. Psalms G3526. Let's hear how it's pronounced. Strong's G, 3526. Niger. 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 It's nigger at the end of the day, right? And what does it mean? It means black. All right. Now let's go down to the Strong's definition. All right. Niger. Of Latin origin, black, nigger, a Christian nigger. Now, we know that those same prophets, okay? Those same prophets are mentioned uh, in Acts the 11th chapter, I believe, verse 13. It's a lot. Let me get that out. Verse 26. All right, so this is Acts the 11th chapter in verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Again, these same people, these same prophets and teachers, all right? And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the first Christians were called niggers, all right? The first Christians, and the first people called Christians were call, also called niggers, all right? And we just saw that the word for nigger, all right, in the Greek, nigger, of Latin origin, all right, means black. Now, so I responded to him. Don't try to play a game of semantics. Nigger comes from nigger, which comes from nigger etymologi etymologically. You're cut, all right? Now he tells me, uh, can you show me proof? I'm genuinely interested. And he's a scoffer, so I, I, I responded with with uh, an answer fit for a scoffer. I said, in the words of the apostle of Tahar, nigga, look it up. It's called Google. Nigga, literally, look it up. Okay? Now, let's let's go to Adam Online. All right, this is the same word, nigger, right? Now, there's there's an African country called Niger or or Niger. Properly pronounced Niger because they speak French there, right? Now, it says African nation, a nation named for the river Niger, mentioned by the name, by that name, 1520 Leo Africanus, probably an alteration by influence of Latin Niger, black. All right, you see that? Now, let's look at the word Niger. Now, obviously, we reclaimed the word Niger and made it Niger. In this, in the twentieth century, all right, late twentieth century, early twenty first century, all right. Let's go to nigger. Okay. Earlier, nigger, all right, nigar, nigger from French nig nigre, from Spanish negro, all right. So, nigger, in the Greek, nigger in the lat in Latin, nigger negro in Spanish, all right all the same thing it means black it's the same goddamn word okay so where i got where we get the word nigga with two g's and an a comes from nigger all right and nigger goes back to that same word that the prophets were called in acts the 13th chapter all right same same as spanish negro right from the earliest uses it was the term that carries with all the obliquity and content and rejection which whites have inflicted on blacks okay you see that so it it, it it really goes back to the to the word negro or nigger all right which is the same all the same words so that's why i told the nigga to stop playing this game of semantics because you're not going to win my guy all right so continuing, it says a member of a this is Negro member of a black a black skin race of Africa, fifteen fifties from Spanish or Portuguese Negro, black from Latin Negrum, uh, nomit, uh, nominative, nominative Neger, black dark sable dusky. All right, you see that it's the same goddamn thing. So 
I wasn't going to go through all of this to prove to the nigga in, in the comment section, okay? So I told him to look it up in the words of Elder, uh, Elder Apostle Tahar, all right? So this is where it just gets even crazier because it just shows how stupid niggas are, right? So he says, of course, I could have could have saw this coming a mile away. He pulls First Thessalonians 5 and 21, prove all things, hold fast on uh, that which is good. Okay. So he goes on to say, I'm kindly asking you to back up what you're saying with proof. You are required you are required to do this according to First Thessalonians five and twenty one. I said, First Thessalonians is not the law of Yahweh, so I'm not required to prove anything to you. All right, I'm required to uphold Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14, and Isaiah 8 and 20, my guy. All right, like I said, look it up, nigga. Now, let's get to those, let's get to, let's get to those precepts, all right? Let's go to, see what, what we, we as children of Israel are required to do. Actually, let me start with uh, Deuteronomy 10 and verse 12, okay? Let's see what Israel is required to do. And now, Israel, what doth Yahweh thy power require of thee? But to fear Yahweh thy power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So the only thing I'm required to do is keep the laws of God, keep Torah. Of course, have faith in Yahweh Shai as well, because it's impossible to please him without faith. He sent Yahweh Shai for a reason, okay? So... First Thessalonians is not the law of God. Proving all things is not a commandment of the Most High God, Yahweh. So I'm not required to do that. All right. Let's continue. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. All right. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter, the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. All right. Let's look at the word duty. obligatory service that which ought to be done also the force of that which is morally right okay uh to oh we owe it to the most high god all right it's our duty all right keep something away from someone that's not really what i need to have all right so obligatory let's look at the word obligatory All right, obligatory. A re required by a legal, moral, or other rule. Compulsory. You see that? That's my duty. That's my obligation. That's what I'm required to do is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's the only requirements, according to the Bible, that I'm, uh, again, of course, other than having faith in Yahweh Shai. All right? That's what I have to do. So I don't have to prove all things to you. Okay? I don't. Now, should should we practice uh, prove, proving things, all right, with scripture or with other sources? Absolutely. But to say that it's a requirement is absolutely ridiculous and asinine, all right? See, niggas like to, what niggas like to do is create straw mans, all right, to, 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 to deflect and take the, the conversation somewhere else, all right, when they got cut, all right? Nigga, you got cut, all right, on the first state, on, on, on one of the first responses, all right? On the Acts 13, all right? The prophets who went out on the highways and byways, who were teaching people in Antioch, were called niggers. There's no new thing under the sun. Guess what? They're still calling the prophets niggers today. Oh, these niggers, they ain't no prophets, blah, 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 blah. Whether it's other, other nations or our own people. No new thing is under the sun, Okay? The prophets were persecuted back then. The prophets are being persecuted right now. Not to the extent of what's what's going to happen, all right, when Jacob's trouble really unleashes, all right? But the men of the Lord are being persecuted, all right? The men who go out on the highways and byways who sigh and cry, all right, for the abominations done here in Babylon, man, all right? These brothers are getting persecuted, all right? These brothers are going through trials and tribulations. These brothers are putting their, their lives on the line. Some of these brothers have families, all right? These brothers are putting their lives on the line. And, and, and it's an honor to go out on the highways and byways with the brothers that I go, that I, I, uh, I hold camp with, all right? All right, the church of, the, the church 
of Philippi, all right? Ma'akim, Nakawam, Hayaman, Yakoyam, all right? Mapatak, all right? Those brothers that I go out on the streets with each and every week, all right? On, on multiple times a week, it's an honor to go out with them, those brothers, all right? It's an honor to be out there fishing for your haobash and your haoshai, all right? But these keyboard niggas, all right? These keyboard prophets, all right? These IG and these Facebook prophets, all right? These niggas don't know nothing about it. See, that's why a nigga like this will get offended by a shirt that says field nigga. Because he don't know nothing about, uh, nothing about being out in the fields, doing the work, okay? All right, so you were cut from the get-go, all right? All right, and here I am, I'm proving, all right, what I said, all right? Now, let's continue. So, he responds, he says, the entire Bible is the law according to Baruch 4 and 1 and Joshua 1 and 8. Let me show you. See, it's, see, niggas think they know every goddamn thing, man. Let me, let me pull up Baruch 4 and 1. Go to Baruch 4 and 1. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endures forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. And I agree with that, that scripture. All right. Now, this was written during the Babylonian captivity. All right. So 1 Thessalonians. All right was not a part of the book of the law at that time. It was not part of the so-called Bible. And again, the word Bible goes back to the Greek word biblos, all right, which ultimately means collection. This is where you get this, uh, you know, the word, the Spanish word uh, for, for library, biblioteca, all right, the same thing, all right, it literally means a collection of books. So the Bible is a collection, all right, there's some, a thing called canon, but right? there are multiple books within one book. All right, the whole book that we know as the Bible, the King James Version, whether it's the 1611 or not, all right, all the scriptures compiled in that collection, all right, are their own separate scrolls or and or books, okay? So, 1 Thessalonians was not a book of the Bible, all right, so it wouldn't fall under Baruch 4 and 1. It would not. And, the, and again... First Thessalonians is a letter. It's not even a book. Okay? It's a letter from Paul to the church of Thessalonica at that time. Okay? Which happened thousands of years, all right, after Baruch spoke these words. Okay? So, sorry, my guy. You can't, you, you, you're cut there. You can't go there. All right? What's the other piece of this idiot called? All right? Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. See, in Acts. Alright, I'm sorry, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Okay? So yes, he was referring to what? the laws of moses okay the first five books of the bible okay the torah which was which was compiled and codified the laws of god were codified with moses during the time of our uh exodus out of the land of egypt all right wandering in the wilderness okay so everything that that's that that was written the the first five books of the bible known as the torah the books of moses which weren't actually written by Moses, but were written by his scribes, okay? All right? That's what Joshua was referring to. He was not referring to... He wasn't referring to the book of Joshua, because guess what? The book of Joshua wasn't even written at the time when he spoke these words. 
you see, you see the logic of some of these niggas. Again, and, and the guy's trying to build this straw man. All right, he's already cut. Now he's deflecting. All right, building a straw man, and then he's attacking the straw man. Okay, nigga, I'm doing. I'm keeping the laws of God's laws laws of the Most High God to the best of my ability, rehearsing the righteous acts. Okay, all right, keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai, going out into the highways and byways on a weekly basis. All right, and and trying to endure this hellhole called Babylon. All right. That's what I'm doing. That's what the men of the Lord are doing. Okay? We ain't out here on the keyboards all damn day. And, and that's it. No. Brothers got jobs. Brothers have families. All right? Bro brothers have businesses. And brothers go out on the highways and byways each and every week. All right? There's no excuse for none of you niggas. All right? If you are a grown-ass man. All right? And you are so-called in the truth. And you know the true name of your house, Hashem, your house, Shai. And you know that salvation is only for Israel. And you have an understanding of these scriptures. All right, and you're listening to all these different camps and whatnot on YouTube. You have a, a, a role to play. All right. You need to get off your ass and go out to the highways and byways and teach your people. I don't care if you don't want to join a camp. Go out by your goddamn self. Okay. Find some other brothers and start your own damn thing. All right. I don't. If, if that's. If you. If you just hate camps so much because there's because niggas love to hate camps all right but again the most i got set up men all right he set up men like apostle of tahar men like uh chief priest alazar ben lawyer uh men like uh deacon haka all right men like uh priest kahan all right men like uh zabak all right elder zabak priest zabak all right he set up these elders all right these men to teach other men and guess what these men are out there doing the work man right whether i agree with everyone all of these brothers that were just mentioned doctrinally that's neither here nor there these men are going out there each and every week all right guys like tahar and, and zabak all right they've been going out they've been they've been doing this thing for 20 30 plus years all right all right i know my elder chief he's in in, in, in uh and deep, they've been in the truth for, for 10, 11 years, been doing this work, all right? There's no excuse, man. There's absolutely no excuse not to do the work of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, all right? Excuses are tools of, inco uh, of incompetence, build, used to build monuments and nothingness. Those who specialize in using excuses seldom excel in anything else. All, right, all you niggas making excuses, oh, I can't get up, I can't do this, oh, I, hate, I don't like camps. Uh, oh, there's no camp around me. Yo, get, stop with the excuses, man. All right. When I first came into the truth, all right, I'm, I'm listening to all these different camps. All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this understanding, trying to keep the law to the best of my ability, you know, trying to keep the holy days, you know, I, you know, keeping the dietary law, you know, trying to uphold the Sabbath, all that good stuff. All right. It gave to point in time when i was just sitting there watching videos and i'm seeing these brothers i'm like yo i need to be doing this too all right and all right the spirit all right the the rakah kadash all right compelled me to to figure out how i was gonna get my ass out on the streets all right i had this thought in my mind that if i don't go out onto the highways and byways the most high god was gonna kill me all right and that's the attitude that a lot of you niggas need to have the most high guy is going to kill you unless you go out onto the highways and byways you need to have that 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 same mentality man all right as a man of israel as a leader it, you have a responsibility as a man of israel all right we can't be these lackluster niggas in the, like these lackluster niggas in the world all right we gotta be men we gotta be men ready to to lead a nation Right, men ready to lead this world, man, to, to, to rule over these nations, man, to show these nations how to truly serve the most high God, how to keep the laws of the most high God. All right, how to live righteously. That's what that's what the most high God is training. He's he's not training up, all right, no sucker ass, simp ass, all right, keyboard house Negroes, man. He's training up true leaders, true men, all right, men who 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 are out in the fields, all right, doing the work. That's what he's training up and raising up in these last days, man. All right. This let me let me get a preset real quick. All right. 
Let me get a preset real quick, okay? This is Amos. Amos 3 and 7. All right, surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. All right? And what, and, 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 and what does he tell his servants, the prophets, to do? To go out and prophesy, man. All right? Speak unto the children of Israel. All right? T tell my people to repent. All right? And how are we going to do that? How are we going to reach them? Out in the streets. Okay? Not out on the freaking uh, internet highways, man. Okay? I mean, this is uh, Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Even unto this very day. All right. What's today's date? Today is uh, October 2nd. No, uh, October 3rd, 2019. And to this very day. Right, the children of Israel, which are you so called black, Spanish, and Native Americans, have transgressed against the Most High God, your God. All right, verse 4 For they are impudent children and stiff hearted. I do send thee unto them that thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith ye, the Lord Yahweh. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they know that there have been a prophet among them. All right, and where we got to do, go out into the highways and byways. Okay. Let's, let's get another precept, all right? Actually, let me stay up in that Exodus slot, that Ezekiel. Let me go to the third chapter, all right? We go to... This is one of my favorite scriptures, man. Ezekiel uh, 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Okay, now let's stop right there. Where is a watchman? A watchman's on the tower, the tower surrounding the city, the walls. Okay, that's what a watchman is doing. That's where a watchman is. So he's sending Ezekiel and all the other prophets to be watchmen, all right? To go out, not in their freaking homes, all right? To go out into the streets, all right? To be on the wall, all right? Prophesying and, and warning Zion of trouble. All right, the trouble that's coming is Jacob's trouble. It's going to be worse than anything that has ever been seen uh, in the earth, pursuant to Daniel, uh, the 12th chapter, uh, verse 1, okay? That's what the watchmen are doing, all right? The watchmen are, are, are on these walls for a reason, okay? Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. And that's why we go out to the streets every single week, week in and week out, and snow, sleep, or hell, okay? In season, out of season, all right? We're proving and rebuking, all right? Letting our people know what's coming, man. Let them know that, yo, this, there's a great army coming, all right? Letting them know that Russia and Iran and, and, and China and North Korea and all these nations are getting ready to shoot all their arrows at Babylon the Great, which is America, all right? These United States of America with three Ks, okay? This place is getting ready to be destroyed, all right? This place is getting ready to be destroyed. So that's what we're coming out here to warn our people about. And the only way for them to to be exempt from that judgment, all right, to avoid that judgment, is to come back to their nationality, knowing that they're a Hebrew Israelite from one of the various tribes, all right, doing what's required of them pursuant to Deuteronomy the 10th uh, chapter, verse 12, all right? Keeping the laws of God, fearing God, all right, upholding Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, all right, okay, speaking the words of the law and the testimony, all right, Isaiah 8 and 20, all right, that's one of the scriptures I pulled on the nigga, man, okay, that's what we're supposed to do, not bang on the keyboard all damn day, okay, that's not what the Most High God, uh, you know, set his men, his true servants out to do. Okay, he sent them out to the streets 
Okay, so for all you keyboard niggas, man, I right, please say, spare me the, the nonsense, okay? So, continuing, right, this nigga says, all right, so he, of course, he quotes Baruch 4 and 1. I respond, so you're telling me that I have to remain unmarried like Paul did and advise in 1 Corinthians 7? And if this nigga was, was, knew the Bible as much as he purports himself to be, all right, if he was as intellectual as he uh, presents himself to be, all right, he would know exactly what I'm talking about when I, when I said that, right? So, of course, he asked me for for a verse. I give him the verse. Right? Then he says just something really, really stupid. He says, Paul said himself that he was given permission to say what he said about marriage. Where's that? Paul's statement about staying unmarried is not a commandment. Again, not a commandment. So, therefore, it's not a law. Right? So, to answer your question, no, you don't have to remain unmarried like Paul suggested in 1 Corinthians 7, 6-9. He tells you that himself in verse 6. Well, yeah, duh, that was my point, all right? So, my point exactly. But you said that the whole Bible is the law. Is this not in the Bible? See, by that logic, this brother needs to remain un unmarried. But yet, he has his, his, his channel is about Israelite polygyny. You see that? You see how? You see how when you dissect these 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 IG and these Facebook prophets doctrine and rhetoric, how it and you put it under a microscope, it just crumbles. You see how the logic is just out the window. All right, and then he continues to go on and on and on, and, and, and it just at, at this point it just gets gets quite uh, annoying. All right, you know, and at the end of the day, man. All right, the, the field niggas are the ones that are going to inherit the kingdom. Okay, the field niggas, the niggas who go out onto the highways and byways, as commanded of Yahweh Shai. All right, as commanded by Yahweh. All right, and with that, all right, I'm gonna say death and destruction to America. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Barakatam told the Akim out there. All right, who's not sitting on their asses, but the ones that actually go onto the highways and byways, teaching this word in truth and sincerity. Why you how about Shimmy How Shai Baraka Thumb to all the elders out there who labor in this truth and who taught us this truth? Until the next time I'm gonna say Shalom.